So I'm going to print something that I designed in Tinkercad. Uh, Tinkercad is a web-based 3D modeler. Uh, it's uh, very simple and if you've never done any 3D design and it's an excellent place to start. A while back they had a contest to um, design chess sets and the person who designed the uh, best chess set would win, win a replicator. And um, I made a robot chess set and this is my knight who is riding a, a steed of sorts based on the wrong trousers. And I'm going to download an STL of this by clicking Print 3D and choosing STL. And my uh, STL is now downloaded. Models from Tinkercad sometimes aren't the cleanest, though a lot of times there's some uh, problems with them. They're not completely 3D printable. And uh, a good um, policy in general is to clean them through uh, NetFab. You can go to cloud.netfab.com and um, any models that you upload through here will be uh, checked um, by the by NetFab Studios software on the website and it'll check it and see if there's any kind of errors, any problems and automatically fix it. So you choose the file and then just put in your email address, accept and upload. Now I have a link to download the repaired version. And now it's downloaded. Now uh, I still need to make sure that it's positioned properly on the build platform. And a good place to do that is Replicator G. If you go to replicat.org, which is Replicator G, uh, you could download the current version. And just choose um, the installer that's appropriate for the operating system that you're using. Now Replicator G is um, it's mostly set up for the MakerBot and the uh, default build platform is not the right size for uh, the Solid Doodle. Okay here we go it's fixed. Now this platform is uh, 100 by 100 millimeters and we need 150 by 150. You could choose other machines. If you go here under other bots, there's some other choices and we need to make Solidoodle show up in here. That is controlled by an XML file. And go to the folder where Replicator G was installed. In this case I have it under my documents. And then go into Replicator G37 and into Machines. And then find the Reprac XML and we'll edit that. Now these here, here are the names your name of the other machines that are available. We're just going to pick one. Uh, I'm assuming you don't already have this machine and name it Solidoodle2. Solid where it says axis ID equals X length 205 that's going to be the size of the platform that it shows and so we're going to change that to 150 by 150 by Z by 150. So save that, close, open Replicator G back up. I'll open Recent Model. And now we have a build platform. Now you can, uh, this is under the view tab. You can mouse around and change the view. Switch to move uh, and move the model around. Sometimes um, the, uh, your model as exported by your CAD program won't be oriented right. You know, maybe it'll be turned this way. You can easily go to rotate and uh, rotate 90 degrees. or you can rotate around Z and that'll let you spin it without moving it up or down or in any other axis very easily. Go move and you can put on platform and automatically stick it right down and center. So it's it's really easy to orient everything very fast in here. Oops. Put on platform. This is a chess piece size but I want it to be a little bit bigger so I can see the detail better and I've got more room to print anyway. So I'm going to scale it by 50%, so 1.5, and just make it a little larger. 
and then um, go ahead and save the STL. Now I can open this up in SkinForge and slice it. Now you can open up SkinForge uh, directly from Pronterface, but I find it can be a little bit buggy. It, it tends to crash when you try and close it. Um, under profile type, make sure it says extrusion and choose the Solidoodle profile. And these defaults are a good place to start with. And um, after you've done your first model, you can kind of see how it came out and decide if anything needs to be changed from there. So I'm just going to go straight to to change to slicing. Uh, you push the Scheme Forge button and uh, choose your file. And uh, away it goes. And then this little console here will show you uh, what it's doing. It'll go through all the different processes. And this could take a few minutes, or it could take as much as an hour or more, depending on how complicated um, the STL is. Okay, now it's done. That'll show uh, a little rendering of what the G code looks like. Um, it's a little bit slow and cumbersome to use this in uh, SkinForge, but um, there's some other software that's really good at showing you a representation of the actual finished G code. Um, I'll cover it later. So now that I have my uh, G code done, which will be saved in the same director directory as the model, um, I'll open up Printerface and uh, connect to the printer. And make sure it's on uh, 250,000 up here and hit connect. Now it's connected. I like to go ahead and get the heater started up and the bed because uh, it takes a few minutes for both of those to heat up. And then go to load file and uh, find that G code that it just made. Right here, export G code. And go right here, it'll give you an estimated uh, duration for how long it thinks that uh, it'll take to print. It's a guess. It might be a little bit more, it might be a little bit less. Now this is your control panel for the printer. Each of these little arcs is a button that will move the head in the direction um, that it's facing in um, 0.1 millimeter increments, 1 millimeter, 10 millimeters, and the outer ring is 100 millimeters. Now, if you're going to hit the 100 millimeters, you need to make sure that uh, you have 100 millimeters uh, of space in the direction that you're going if you're going to go in a direction that does not have an end stop. And the end stop is a little switch that when the, the head bumps it, it tells it it's hit the end and that it should stop. But the end stop is only on the right side for the X axis and on the back for the y-axis. There's no end stops on the other side and if you send it 100 millimeters in that direction and you don't have 100 millimeters of space it's just gonna ram into the left side and try to keep going. And if it ever does that you immediately unplug it or switch off the power strip you need to turn off the power immediately. And then over here is your control for Z for the platform minus actually goes up. Again there's 10 millimeters, 1 millimeter, and 0.1 millimeter. These are the home buttons. Uh, when you press one of these, the um, the head will go to uh, one of the end stops. And if you press this one, then it'll home all the axes. And then this is where you, you set the temperatures you want the heater to go to. You, s you set it, return it off, and same for the bed. And then this is your extruder controller. This number will tell you how many millimeters of filament it will pull in, and this number is how fast it will go. So you just leave this one at the default, and uh, you could change this number. Five is good for um, just uh, making sure you've got the filament going. If you're changing colors and putting in new color filament, then it's easier to set that to 100 and then let it run until a new color comes through rather than having to just press the button over and over and over and over to go five millimeters at a time. And of course, the reverse button for backing it out. And um, the extrude and reverse won't work if the temperature is below a set minimum. And that's to uh, protect it from trying to extrude filament that isn't melted. And that'll just grind the gear against the filament. So until it's up above 
about 180s or so, um, your extrude won't work. And uh, make sure your monitor printer is checked. And that way it'll show you what the temperature is. The graph gets in the way here, but this is the temperature you've set and this is the temperature that it's at. So already the extruder is up to 208 and the bed is up to 50. Um, if you're about to print or even before you start slicing, it's a good idea to turn the bed on because it does take a little while to get up to temperature. So when you're ready to print then, uh, all you have to do is print. There'll probably be some plastic already coming out of the nozzle and uh, as it's moving it's a good idea to just grab that extra plastic out of the way with the tweezers. And it's off and running.